So you want to add some awesome interactive grass to your game? In this video we will take a look at how you can easily achieve this using the simple grass textured plugin. It allows you to directly paint your grass and also make it interactive. Source code for this project is down in the description and if you find this helpful please subscribe. So let's dive in. So I have a new project here and I've prepared a few textures and simple player scene. One of the textures is for the game I'm currently developing, Forgefront, and the other texture is a game I recently saw and it's content warning and they had some really simple and nice looking grass similar to this. So let's download the plugin. You can go to the asset library in the top middle here and you can search for simple grass and it will be simple grass textured. Click on that and you want to click download and then install. When it's installed successfully, close this down by pressing OK. And now you will see you have a folder with the name add-ons and inside of there you will have the plugin. To enable the plugin, go into project and project settings. Head over to the tab plugins and you want to enable the simple grass textured. Now we can close this down and we can go into the 3D view and we can make a new scene. So I'm going to make this a 3D scene and we're going to add mesh for us to paint on. So hit the plus button or control A and search for CSG. I like adding a CSG combiner and inside of that have all my CSG shapes. So I'm going to add a CSG box. I'm going to enable the use snap so it's more even. I like things when they're even. Drag it out to a nice size, something like that. I'm going to select the CSG combiner and I'm going to enable use collision because the simple grass textures paints on the collision. So I'm going to enable use collision and now this shape will have collision. I'm going to select the root node, node 3D, and I'm going to add a new node and now I'm going to add a grass node. So that's the simple grass textured. It shows up if you search for grass, create that, and you will see the circle. And in the bottom left, you will see draw, fill and erase. Drawing, when you paint on your grass, when you hold down your mouse button, you will start to draw. You can also increase the radius and this is the area that will be drawn on. You will see that the circle is bigger and you can also increase the density. If you want it full density, you want to select the fill one because increasing it to the max won't actually be the max. So if we go over to the fill one by selecting fill and I can show here that now it fills to the max for this area. Next we can go over to erase and erase basically erases everything that you draw and it's done the same way as painting. So let's say you want to make a trail through here, you can just paint your trail through grass. Some people like to uh, paint smaller grass at sides so you can just select the uh, either fill or draw. You can change the scale over here and let's say 0.75 is a good scale for the sides here. I'm gonna erase again, change the radius a little bit to smaller and go through here again. That might look a little bit more natural uh, similar to a road in the forest or something. You can also change the rotation, but I wouldn't really recommend doing that because you already have the rotation randomizer, which will make every single one a random rotation. And then we have the minimum distance between grass, but I would only focus on the important ones, the radius, the density and the scale. Okay, so here on the inspector tab for the simple grass texture, we can input a texture. And I can show it off with the textures I have. So first I'm going to show it off with the texture that I'm using for my game that I'm developing, Forgefront. So I'm going to drag the texture into the texture albedo and you will see that it's white. I prefer using white textures because it allows me to change the albedo and make it whatever color I want to. And I would recommend everyone to just use a white texture because of that reason. So here we can change the albedo. You likely want your grass to be something green. Here we have green and it's looking pretty nice. I'm also going to show it off with my other one. I remade something similar to what they use in content warning. I'm going to drag that texture in and it will look something like this. I think it looks really fluffy and nice. So that's something. You can also change the scale in here. 
If you want it to be taller, you can change it on the horizontal. And if you want it to be wider, you can change that here as well. So that gives you a lot of options. The scale variable, that could be a cool effect, making some grass smaller and some grass um, taller. I'm gonna leave that alone for now. Then we have the grass strength. And then we have interactive levels. Um, I will go over that later when we go into the interactive part. Then you can also change the material parameters. Let's say your texture needs more transparency. By the edges, you can increase the alpha scissors, for example. Or make the grass a different roughness or a metallic or a specular. Then they also have an optimization, which I find really useful. Let's say if you're far away, right now it's set to, I'll drag this out so it's easier to see. So there is the max distance. So if we decrease this to something like 10 and the minimum distance to one. And if we zoom out now, oh, we have to enable optimization by distance. And now you will see it's only showing when we're close to it. And this is really good for optimization. I'll increase it to something more reasonable like 20 and five. But you have to enable this to something that fits your game and how far away players can see. But it's working really nice, as you can see. Then we also have the level and this basically, the lower it is, the more heavily it will optimize and the higher level, the less it will optimize. So maybe something like five is good for this. Then we have the multi mesh and you can see how many instances you have made. So there are 1800 instances of the grass in just this part. But it's not very performant, I find. So you can paint hundreds of thousands of grass. As long as you enable the optimization, it will still work fine. And that's just about what I want to cover on the simple grass textured. Next, I'm gonna enable interactive. So for enabling interactive, I will first draw on this entire shape, increase the radius, click out of the simple grass textured again, and click on it again to get my painting tool, increase the radius and paint over everything. I'll select the root node and drag in my player. See now that the grass is a little bit too big, so I will decrease the scale to half the size. That's better. I'll also increase the radius to 50 and 20. Now I will, on the root node of the scene, I will make a new script and here in the ready function to set your simple grass textured. So simple grass dot set interactive to true. I will also save the scene and if we run the scene, the grass will be set to interactive, but it won't have anything to interact with. So you will have to go over to your player scene and you can make a new shape. I already have my standing and crouching shapes. You could set those shapes into interactive, but I'm gonna make a new shape. So I'm gonna search for mesh instance and add that to my scene. They recommend making it a sphere. So I'm gonna make a sphere. I'm gonna head into the side view and move it up. That's a little bit too much. I want it at the ground. So I'm gonna go into the transform and make it on Y.5. Now it's exactly at the ground. And on the layers for the mesh instance for interactive grass, you want to uncheck level one and check your level 17. I'm gonna rename this mesh to interactive. Now when this shape is on the layer 17, you don't want your camera to be able to see this shape. So you wanna uncheck the um, layer 17 on the camera cool mask. This will make it so the camera can't see that shape. Next, you want to go into your player script and on the physics process function, you want to get the simple grass textured and set the player position global underscore position. Save this script. And now if we head over to our scene that we have painted our grass, we can now run the scene. It's looking really nice, I think. And if we jump as well, it will also interact with that. And now we can change with the um, strength of the grass. If you want it to interact a lot more, you can decrease the strength. I was just kidding when I said uh, increasing the strength, increased um, interactive level. This is how much it's affected by the wind. As you can see, now it's moving a lot more with the wind and making it one will just make it static. So a 0.5 is good for that. Here we have the interactive level and increasing this, you can see that they increase how interactive the grass becomes. I would just recommend leaving them at the default settings since they are already pretty nice. 
You can also optimize your grass if you select your grass textured and go into the simple grass textured up here in the top middle and they recommend uncheck cast shadows and that will make the grass not cast any shadows and you can also bake your height map but I like to keep shadows on. If you want to read more about this plugin you can do so on its github or itch page linked in the description and you can load meshes that you can paint for example 3d grass but it's not as intuitive as proton scatter where you can just load a scene and paint that scene um, because here you need to use the actual model and I think you have to export it as a GLB. Thanks for watching. If you want to support my work, check out my Ko-Fi in the description and I'll see you in the next one.